I think I've drawn for the most part of my life, you know, like, yeah. I, I feel like from when I was five, even, bro, I would just be drawing. And my mom really would like, be like, oh, do your thing, <laughs> you know, and, you know, so, you know, you go through school and everyone has their party trick in, in junior school, right? So like some people would bring some fancy uh, pencil cases, yeah. Owens would have like, you know, different games and all. Uh, some ones would read books, like complete a whole Harry Potter in like a week and you're like, what the? I think that was Yeah, amazing. and then like me, I would, I would just draw, bro. Like, um, I was actually known for that every, I feel like everywhere I was, I was known for, known for drawing. For drawing. Yeah, for like, from like junior school, all through high school. Um, yeah. That was yeah. just, yeah, that yeah, was yeah. People just see me, all right, cool. This one is a funny one. But when it but comes when to comes the pencil to... and shit, nah, <laughs> like, this one is bad, <laughs> you know. Also, like, so, you know, I, I didn't go, I didn't do, like, art in high school, right, for, like, subjects, like, all level and stuff. Uh, funny, I ended up writing sciences, just sciences, for my O levels and my A levels. Yeah. But, you know, like, art was one of those things where, like, I, I could tell that I was really artistic each time I would feel... You know, deprived of it yeah. you know so like when i was made to drop art in form three because my accounting and my business studies uh, grades weren't as good right and i was made to drop that so that i can focus on that what's funny is i actually ended up dropping the accounts and the business studies <laughs> you to know go back to to, no i didn't even do art like i just wrote, just, yeah 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 you just I, didn't have I like what like the aptitude for that nah fair <laughs> enough man I read somewhere that you were supposed to go study engineering. Yeah. But that changed and then you decided on art instead. What was happening there? Eesh. So a lot of things just happened weirdly around that time. So my dad wanted me to do civil engineering, yeah. which I mean, yeah, I could have handled it, but I would have really struggled to actually like go through it. Right, and actually civil engineering would have been better than structural engineering yeah. and electrical engineering. Why? Like, I mean, I'm good with numbers, right? Like, um, mathematically speaking, like, yeah. Yeah, I'm actually quite the... But like, yeah. you know, when it gets complicated, like, you know, I don't know. I don't know. It just, yeah. Oh, yeah, I was just like, nah. <laughs> nah. is it, is it and it wasn't thing? like it wasn't something I was now passionate about, right? Yeah. Because when I was applying for actual, for actual uni on my own terms, I was applying for architecture, which for me was would have been the perfect, bro. Yeah. Like, I started drawing cabins at like law six, like proper proper like planning and you know doing. So it would have made sense yeah, to, like, to actually like because like would have had like the passion to see it through. Is that like yeah? Because okay? like. I, I'm, it's not like I'm complaining about the combination I did yeah. in high school, right? Like in my A-levels, which I did was math, physics, and geo, right? Yeah. And I f did fairly good on my math and my physics. And geo is, yeah, because I don't like reading. <laughs> not at all, right? So, and, you know, with math, right, it kind of triggers creativity. On a psyche level, I don't know how that works. I'm sure there are uh, neurologists that actually study how yeah, math how and works, art yeah. are actually related maybe it's because of like you know proportions and you know playing with balance blah 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 right yeah but for me maths and physics would have made sense because i could be study architecture like right after right i was like well you know what just to be uh, to be me i want to do art art so I, I then went with ziva and then they went me through their graphic design course and i just took like two terms yeah. Those two terms, bro, I learned so much. You know, Ziva, was this um, Zimbabwe, Zimbabwe Institute, Institute of Digital Arts? Yeah. Okay, yeah. yeah. Right, so like me going with my passions, right? That, that also was kind of triggered by the fact that my dad was like, you know, he was good in like engineering, man. Like this Owen did the most by the age, by the time he's my age. Yeah. This Owen had done the most. I'm like, well, you know what? You're mom. <laughs> but him following passion, like his farming passion, then I'm like, yeah, you know what? This is something I would actually inherit from him. Right. Yeah. So, I mean, that's that. Yeah. Like, yeah. so essentially what you're saying is like he, 
him leaving like engineering to actually go and yeah. do that was him following his passion. His passion, right? right? So, so was that in so juxtaposing that is yeah. me choosing me art in, and architecture or whatever yeah. instead of like me doing engineering. Yeah. Basically yeah. that. Yeah. 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 And and he was with it? If uh, yeah, he's 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 really seeing it like damn, it's coming this, it's coming like full yeah. circle now. Yeah. Yeah. Fair enough. Yeah. Fair enough. Zila. Yeah. And then cut. Uh, Chino University of Technology, yeah. uh, fine art. Um, you're currently studying that. I think you're on the like uh, tail end of that, right? Yeah. Um, yeah. My question would then be because you've had like these two experiences in like formal institutions, right? Um, what do you think formal education gives artists that they might not get if they take like uh, a self-taught path? All right. So I will split the two, right? Yeah. Fair. All right, so from zero, I really learned to appreciate, like, you know, aesthetic value, right? Like, things that don't have to be nice. This man, Saki Mofundigo, who was a principal, was like, nothing should be nice. It's something have to, it has to make sense, but beautifully, you know, type of thing like that. Um, so from there, I was taught, you know, how to make things that communicate something. But like in a pretty way, like you know. Yeah. So that's the like the technical side of art. Like I, that's where I learned like, you know, how to actually appreciate things as they are because that's where I actually picked up photography at Zero through Calvin Dondo. Shout out. Love that. Ah, <laughs> that man. So he's got a book out called Hordi Zimbabwe. It's like street photography. So if you've yeah. noticed, I've actually I I do portraiture street documentary yeah. uh conceptual stuff right so like the conceptual stuff that's mostly inspired by the fact that he would show us books by like other photographers from you know like old mali and then new new owns and then yeah. you know so he'd show us books from like photographers from outside like zim and from there he was he would help us like appreciate like composition lighting and you know colors and you yeah. know so now that was one thing and then you come with the graphic designer teacher who's telling you that things have to be balanced you know and so now you take so now i'll say my first you know introduction to art you know outside you know just drawing outside was, you just yeah. yeah was that photography right and with that i was able to like create a decent portfolio at a young age which actually still shocks me now, bro. Like, <laughs> I'm just yeah. like, what was actually going on? Because that that time I was really experimenting with like, am I trying to be a fashion photographer? And then I would look up people like Albert Watson, Malik um, then the Say Educator, right? These are like old folk. Yeah. And then you're looking at like, Annie, okay, Annie Libre is still old, but like she's still like working, working. Um, then when I could say King, and then Around that time, that's when I started linking with the Nakas, and then at that time, Tamari Kudita was doing something in Cape Town, and I was like, "What? This is more?" Because I was actually interested in like film. Yeah. Then I was like, oh, "Okay, this 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 is something dope, right?" And then I see that it's a hand doing. I'm like, "Oh shit, this is actually really dope." Yeah. This is that, and then there's also um, this one dude, uh, Steven Jikosi. So around that time, I was just seeing like, okay, so there's portraiture by these people, and then there's like street from these people, and then, you know, just taking so, yeah, so just in. taking so much in, because like with Kelvin Dondo from that school, and even like, um, um, I'm forgetting my other lecturer's name. Oh, it'll come, Colin, Colin Beda. Yeah. yeah, he would really encourage us to like just read, <laughs> you know, not only read but like just eat up like you know art and design and. You know, have fun with it. So you do it in such a way that you would have fun with it. Like both of them, they would have, do it in such a way you would have fun with it, and you know, you you would be encouraged to experiment. Yeah. Right. So that's zero, right? And then now cut, um, cut. I would say they really taught me like the theoretical side of you know art. You know, because like um, I feel like my favorite part of university was learning like the actual art history and theory yeah like partying aside uh <laughs> Fair enough. Fair enough. partying aside socializing aside i would actually say the best times in uni 
for me was like when I was learning aesthetics. Uh, this course called aesthetics. This course called Zimbabwean, uh, Zimbabwean and contemporary art. Yeah. Whoa, bro! Like I learned so much, and you know, it it kind of helps you think of art differently. Like yeah. you know, you can present art <laughs> in so many different ways. The based off of like the message you put behind it. So now you put, you take like. Um, I would say my technical know-how from like Zero. Then you come in with these ones that are telling you that oh, alright, cool. There's an old who presented um, a pile like like a, I would say like a shrine, but it's not a yeah. shrine. But like for me, I would say it's a shrine because like it's, uh, it's it, it now knowing what about what it is. I'm like yeah, this is this is it. It's called Together Mufu, right? Yeah. It's um, by I don't know why I keep forgetting names. But it will come. Just yeah, chazunguza. Yeah. It's called chazunguza. Yeah. So now you're looking at art as in, I could put a nail there, and actually it could be present. It could represent probably um, being unnoticed, and people think that you're just there. And you know, you can actually base off, you know, the whole social construct just by putting a nail yeah. on the floor, yeah. and then it means something yeah. by itself. And then you know how. You can look at art differently. Like you can see a gun. I could see a gun, but you know, if I'm from okay. SA, I'm probably thinking gangs. If you're from Afghan, you're probably thinking terrorist wars. And then if you're from America, you're probably thinking like uh, self-defense, self-defense. Okay. You know. Fair enough. Yeah. So yeah. like, yeah. cut kind of helps me help me like discover that, right? And then from there, that's when I would start to like really think up some concepts that. I would say are beyond me, right? So now how that helps, well, that's how like schooling helps me, right? Yeah. Yeah. Some people would take it different, right? Because sometimes school can like actually hinder you from exploring your creativity yeah. because you could be taught something, you become so technical, you just get stuck on the like technical. You always stick to then that. You, yeah, me. yeah, right. But how it helped me is I I was open-minded about it, and I was interested about it, like really much so. So that I would say that helped yeah. me actually like become an artist in that regard. But yeah, I mean, just like everything, people react to it different. Yeah, you know. Yeah, yeah. always, yeah. always. And so, speaking to like the the. You talked about conceptual work that you do with photography. I think even your art. I was um, at your exhibition last year. Congratulations mm-hmm. on that, right? Shout with uh, Kuda Basque. Shout out to the MLFC. And no, that's um, very rare. the art as well is like so abstract, right? Mm-hmm. Um, abstract art is interesting because, like you said, um, especially in that terrain, right? Like people take so many different things from it right and sometimes that can that form of art can tend to confuse people um Mm -hmm. i see it especially when people try to find meaning in work what does art mean what does this mean what does that mean um to you do you have like an um a particular message or story you're trying to communicate an overarching story that like maybe most of the art of chakras falls under like is there something like that i don't know like so let's say all right let's take photography and painting right yeah um the message i usually portray my paintings are not usually the messages i portray my photography yeah. and even in my photography itself i have different like you know messages that i'm really you know trying to put across um so i f- recently finished a series on you know self-discovery right and then there's going to be one that's going to be about you know traveling you know so that's whole street now and then that's like you know documenting life and then there's also this conceptual you know so i feel like i don't want to say i have one message that i'm trying to push and Agenda, agenda, you know, <laughs> but um, I try, I try to say what I see, 
even if I see a lot, you know. Yeah. Like I, I'm not trying to just say this thing is bad, but I'll ju- also say this thing is also good, you know. I'm not trying to say that this thing is big, and I'm also trying to say this this thing is also small. So like, yeah. and that you yeah, it. you know, like yeah. if my if some of my artworks contradict, that's because I'm saying what I'm seeing, right? Yeah. If I see people playing the mbira and an owner is dancing his butt out with a chibuku and you're and then this on another piece I'm saying say no to drugs, probably it's like me saying, yo, there are people who are saying no to drugs, say no to drugs. But then there are also people that are saying, I'm having fun with this thing. Yeah. Right? So it's kind of like, it, I feel like in a way I'm just exhuming stuff, yeah. you know, just unwrapping and just yeah. yeah, saying what I'm seeing, like, oh, this is that, and it's black, and it's, you know, it's there, yeah, it's just there. and there, this, is, <laughs> this thing is red, so, yeah, it's, it's red, there. Yeah, this thing is white, then that's there, however you want to take it, that's up to you, yeah. right, yeah. because, of course, like, there are, th- there are things I would actually, like, not talk about in my art, like, definitely, like, yeah, that's definite, but also, like, if I'm free to say that, huh, that is that, then let that be that. Because news can actually report on sport, yeah. can report on, like, stocks, you can, you can report weather. on business, weather, Anything. you know, everything, you know. Yeah. So, like, to a degree, right? yeah, in a way, yeah. artists are news reporters, in a way. Yeah, yeah. fair enough. In terms of, of, of that, right, you, you mentioned that you don't necessarily have, like, an overarching message, but you're just... Uh, portraying experiences as you come across them. Yeah. Uh, how does your process work? Uh, I know you're a photographer, you're a uh, visual artist as well. Uh, for those particular mediums, um, how does your, your process work? You've seen something, how do you know that what I've seen here is worth uh, turning into art and how do you go from there? Um. If I just get like a like a strong feeling and like if I can get a strong message out of it and someone can learn something, you know, it's then I feel like it's worth mentioning. I'm like there, there it is. Yeah. You know, because you never know who you're speaking to. Uh, you don't because like I may I may hang a piece in the gallery, right? But I'm not there saying no. You don't go. You go. You don't know who's actually mm-hmm. coming in. And how they experience that may change their life on some tremendous, yeah, <laughs> you know, maybe like level, a, you know, epiphany type thing. Yeah, you know, and yeah, that's basically that. Yeah. But the worst of it is me just saying, uh, "This is what it is." Uh, yeah. I don't know what to think about it. There's a bag. <laughs> uh, I don't know what to think about it. Make but it what th- you think, will. Make me help me think. Yeah. Because I also feel like the other reason why at an art show, right, uh, artists have conversations with other people is for them to actually understand the art better, you know, because... Also, it's, is, sorry to cut you off, uh, but I, I really want to get this. Uh, is it to say, like, sometimes you want to hear what I think when I see the work? Yeah. Because sometimes you might have a profound understanding beyond what I actually you know, portrayed, you know, because I could portray, let's say, uh, um, let's say I could actually just have a documentary photography type of a lady by by, by the palm seeker, right? Then someone comes and is like, you know, this person looks happy and you didn't see that. Oh, "Oh, damn, this lady actually looks happy. And you're like, ah, oh, maybe in life you don't need much at all for you to actually be happy. So, I mean, this lady, she's, you know, content with her life and, you know, her job and, you know, her making these two senses a day and, you know, her getting, maybe she gets home to a respectful husband and, you know, uh, a respectful kids and, a, you know, just a loving home. She looks that, but she's working, a, you know, a simple job. Yeah. Then... I'm just like, damn, I just took a picture of the lady by the Bamsika. Then you start questioning yourself, 
was this the reason why I actually took a picture of this lady? Yeah. Is it because she was just happy and lively and she looked good, like everything is good? Sense, right? like, and then now it gets you thinking, just because of what other person, yeah, what another person thought, you know. So, you know, when you have those interactions with people, with like who actually observe your art. Because sometimes I actually just have some friends just tell me about what they think, you know. Yeah. Um, the ones that actually kind of have an understanding of, you know, the depths <laughs> of art sometimes. Because, like, sometimes someone will look at your art and be like, oh, and what, what are you doing? <laughs> yeah, I mean, that uh, this is just robots doing Abstract dudes, and, yeah. art, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, but in a way, art is as abstract as life, bro. Mm. Yeah. If, if you really try, you know, put something, you know, it's like put an X onto something, you know, it's like a maramba, sometimes you squeeze it you like, and you think you got it and then you just squeeze it out of your hand, yeah. you know. So, you know, the, like how life is abstract and art is abstract, sometimes an art piece, like I said, could mean different things to yeah, different people. To different people. And so does life, bro. Like some people think of bad situations as opportunities to learn some people look at bad situations as just people chances to complain yeah. and blame spirits yeah but like i don't know <laughs> you know who what knows? is the right way to live who knows right there's there's <laughs> like if you see an abstract art piece here you don't know whether it's look at it in portrait <laughs> landscape <laughs> upside down is it supposed yeah. to be squonk you know it, it's, so it's yeah. funny you say that i went to uh Delta Gallery last year, uh, I love there that. was a piece by Chrissy of Kwasi. <laughs> Chris! And so, <laughs> the one with the black Hanzi. I've forgotten the name, yeah. right? So it's I but it's got Shona item. I posted it on my IG and then yeah. she DM'd me and she's like, I, I love that you love that, but it's upside down. <laughs> it was hung upside down. For real? Yeah, she texted me and I'm like, oh, what? Oh, I, I, oh, I just was that intentionally? It. I don't think it was intentionally. I think it was like a time thing where things were like being done at uh, the last minute. But I, I didn't perceive that. I just took whatever I took from it as it was. And I laughed about it when she tasted me. Man. So I just thought of it when, oh, you, when you're hard, talking man. about Chris like, is actually hard, man. Really dope. Really yeah, good. she's like spiritually really attuned, man. Really good. Yeah, she's really good peeps, one, man. One of one. One of, yeah. <laughs> Shout out Tino. <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> and so, your work thus far has had um, a distinctly muted, monochromatic look. Like, your, if, it, if it's photography, uh, you love black and white. Like, a lot of it is in black and white. Yeah. And then even the, the visual art that's outside of photography, it's, the colors are muted. Um, yeah. Yeah. I think you've described it's, it as, as, as monochrome. Uh, for in a way. Just like, yeah. Me, I think muted just does it, right? Um, is that like, is that a conscious decision? Is that... <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so it's funny you use the word conscious. Yeah. Right? Because there's conscious music. There's yeah. conscious house music. There's, you have to be conscious, you know. It's such a weird word, isn't it's it? It's a like... weird, weird word. <laughs> it's like the word weird itself, because the word weird apparently means something that is out of the world, like yeah. know, something that's alien. Uh, yeah, yeah. You know, a UFO is weird because it's out of the world, yeah. you know? So, conscious is also weird because conscious is out of the world, and yeah. your subconscious, when you connected yourself to your conscious, it really becomes out of this world, you know? Um, what I mean by that is, I don't, f I feel like my subconscious controls my art mostly. Yeah. So, I feel like, all right, it goes down to like how you, what you feed your subconscious is how, what you feed it through your mind and how you feed your body, you know? Yeah. Um, so. You know how there's this whole thing, you take care of your body, you take off your mind. Yeah. But I don't feel people actually continue that to say it, it also has control on your soul. So like I feel like your soul is, re and then your spirit, right? Yeah. I feel like your soul is like your, where your heart is, like, that's how I believe, right? So you have your body, of course, like this is, you know, 
Koda, this is yeah. who you know, and like you know, there's a face to him, and yeah. like you know, and then there's my mind, and then my mind is what I'm giving you right now, right? Like my yeah. thoughts and my ideas, and you know, all these things, and then um, you have your soul, which is responsible for your actual character, your you know feeling, your you know mood, you know. Yeah. Um, that's why you can hear someone say, "Oh, this person has so much soul." You know, and their mm. soul music actually is gotten the right to be called soul music, bro. And then ultimately, there's like your spirit, right? How I look at it is, spirit is head of the, the subconscious, right? Yeah. And spirit comes from like you know God, I believe Yahweh, mm. right? And then who gave us Yeshua, and then who gave us you know Ruach. Ruach is that whole Holy Spirit. Yeah. So if you take off your body, right? Like you know, you not only exercise, but like you know, you take off your body. <laughs> you know, whatever, however you want to look at it. Yeah. Yeah. And then, consequently, you take off your, you know, your mind. Because now, people will say that ah, every time I go to the gym, I feel, you know, my mind is, you know, fear, yeah. blah blah blah. And then, if you take care of your mind, then definitely your mood will change and your character becomes, you know. A bit better if you're really conscious about it. Yeah. And then if you give, and I feel like this is what God gave us as to be as an individual. So your soul is definitely different from mine, yeah. and your body is definitely different from mine. Minds can have similar, you know, links, but Obviously not yeah different, right? But spirit is like, if I was to say the Holy Spirit were to be in this room right now. It would be able to possess both of us, and we would be able to, like, you know, do some weird subconscious yeah. shit. Yeah. Telekinesis. People would say that, but I don't know how far that can go. Like, I, I yeah. don't know if I want to test that. If it's meant to be. If I'm gonna experience that. Yeah. But I feel like sometimes it gets there where you're like thinking something, and someone else is thinking that, and you're like, oh shit, you know, coinky dink. Yeah. Another thing I want to touch on, right, is. Um Curatorship. Um, in a, in oh, another shit. interview, you mentioned uh, something that uh, you mentioned. You also mentioned that when you were talking about uh, formal education, right? In another interview, where you're like, yeah, yeah for, for stuff yeah. like curatorship, it also helps, right? Um, I, I get the sense that that's a path that you you want to get into. Yeah. Um, yeah. But you have to, you actually have to kind of school me because I come across this term a lot and it's actually odd. I've never like done the research to actually learn like what a curator is, like what, what their role is and, and why that's something that, that interests you like particularly. Um, all right. So like when I enrolled at CUT, right? Yeah. Uh, I was doing industrial design, which is basically designing stuff with good ergonomics and, you know, cool design. So that's stuff like your phone, okay. like that yeah. whole casing, the whole, you know, where to put the camera and like, you know, how the whole interaction, yeah. that, then I was like, eh, no. Then I went to graphic design because I was like, you know, it's what well, it's called visual communication and yeah. And then I went to that and then, so when we're there, they didn't have fine art, fine art. They were thinking about it, but there were not enough people that had, you know, Interest. Yeah, enrolled into that and like signed up. So, how it actually just got to me. So, like in our first year, right, I bumped into that when I was what? I was, I was actually at a gallery and then that, yeah, yeah that whole thing. And then I was like, oh snap, this is the whole thing. And then I got interested in that because. At that time, I was also learning like art history, right? Like part of our first, like most of our first years, like art history and like, you know, just knowing. So like from that, I just started getting like really keen. And then I bumped into it like, uh, I think it was, I don't know if it was after one, 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 two. I don't know. But like, yeah, I bumped into that. I'm like, okay, this is what it is. So when, when now the school was like, um, if you, there, there are enough owners who actually want to do fine art, Let's do it. And I was like, this is actually my chance, bro. Yeah. And yeah, I took that and then I switched from visual communication to fine oh. art. And then, so my f sole purpose for that move 
was for curatorship. Yeah. Right? Because I like putting things together, right? And make something out of it. I feel like what I like about curation or putting things together is stripping individuality from something and making it a part of something. You know, a nut is a piece of metal, right? Yeah. But strip that away, it's an actual functional piece that holds together a whole wheel. Yeah. If they're four of them or six yeah. of them, you know. So, I mean, that whole being like, all right, cool, we acknowledge your properties, but you're not enough alone. Yeah. So let's put you here where you complement something and then you become a whole thing. You know, because you can't drive a whole nut and, a, and you know, a bolt, you know. But like combination that. of that and like, you know, parts and like now. fluids and stuff, then you have a whole car that's yeah. running. And you can say that, oh shit, that is a V12 engine with, but it's just pieces of metal and oils that are working together yeah. to make something. Yeah. So I feel like that's what also inspires me. But also like, I feel like also with what to do with how I grew up, because my mom is not not much on toys, right? I would have toys, but toys like Lego, yeah. um, puzzles. Uh, I would play with a Rubik's Cube. Never sold one, solved one, ever. <laughs> but like, Fair just enough. playing with that, you know. <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, that I feel like also just kind of had a thing to yeah, do with, kind of like a loose you influence. know. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I hate yeah, I, hate I don't know. Shout out my Quan, bro. <laughs> as <laughs> nah, she as, raised as me you right should, here. as you should. Yeah, because like I feel like now, now that you ask me that, it's really becoming you know, stamped that oh snap, like the way I was actually brought up, is actually how I became who I am. Yeah, you know, like creativity wasn't something that was really shunned down upon. It's only like what you're saying about it, like because I remember I got this pair of sneakers by ACDC. And there are a whole lot of, you know, <laughs> funny stuff. <Yeah. laughs> she would call it that. <laughs> and she was like, oh, chuck away these boots. I don't care how much you spent on these items. Chuck them away. <laughs> yeah. And so that also goes with, like, the message, you know. So, yeah. Fair enough. Yeah. I hear that, man. That's, I think that's, like, a really good place to end. I think yeah. I...